So, and now it's time to start with exactly that process a lot of people are waiting for since we created that video series. And this is to implement something new into the standard web of the Identity Manager. Rafi, please start. Okay. So what will, uh, what will we do today? We will show how to add a new page to an existing application. In this case, or in our case, this application is the portal. So we will add a page which will show a list of identities. And we will also add search capabilities. And then we want to select one item, so one identity, and, and look at the details. Now, to do that, um, we have to, to follow different steps. Yeah? The first step is we have to um, generate a new component yeah? with uh, the Angular CLI. The second step is we have to add a route to the Angular routing table so that the application knows that a specific route uh, is assigned to a specific component. And the, the third step is to create a new menu, which then when you click on the button or on the menu item, uh, which will navigate to that page. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there are two, um, two main or base libraries. One is QBM. Yeah? And the first thing we have to do is to build QBM. And then we will add the new uh, page or the new component to the QER library. So to do that, so I have already opened the terminal. You can see that uh, in, 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 in code, in VS Code. Yeah. To build QBM, we have to issue this command. So it's basically it's npm run build QBM. As mentioned earlier, we will add the new page to the QER uh, library because QER is about, about identity, so it's the correct place to, uh, to implement that page. And before uh, we create the new components, uh, we will also build QER, but in watch mode. What does that mean? It does mean that if we change code in the QR library, there is something like a watchdog and, and, uh, and it will detect that there are changes and it will always recompile QER. Now, because of this watchdog functionality, um, the QER command is a little bit different. Yeah, It looks like this. Um, and what we are doing here, so you can see npm run build, so on and so forth, and when you use npm run and then you issue something, basically you are executing a, uh, an, a script. All scripts we, we are supporting in the package JSON, JSON. Yeah. So in the script section, so you have something like a normal build, you have build watch and we are using build watch. Um, and as you can see, then the script is issuing uh, an Angular CLI, so an ng command. In this case, it will issue this command. Okay, so let me execute it. Okay, now um, QR is built and the process is watching if there are any changes. So basically when you create a component, you have different options. One, one option is to simply create the component but normally you put the component into uh, a module. So what we will do, we will add a new module uh, to, to the QER library, and then we will add the, uh, the component to that module because that module can contain more than one, uh, uh, um, one component. It can contain services, and when you want to export it, that's, that's the, way, the way to go. And to do that, we are using uh, the Angular CLI. The command to generate the module is, is this one. And the ng generate module has more options, but uh, we don't need them for the sample. Basically, parameters are the module name. And as you can see, we have also to, to assign it to a specific uh, project or library. In this case, the project is QER. 
And now there is our new shiny module. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the QR um, library <clears throat> and see if we can find it. So the, the module name is sample identity. So there should be now a folder called sample identity. And here you go. And right now it contains the module specification file, which is uh, more or less empty, as you can see. Now, the next thing is we will add to that module our sample component. And what you can do is you can use uh, the uh, Angular CLI to create the modules and, and, and services and components, but they also work in a dry run mode which I like because then it will not really create the component in this case. It will only show you what it, it will create if you are not in, in, in dry run mode. And let me just show you that. So this command is a little bit longer, as you can see. Yeah? And in the end, you see this dry run com uh, parameter. And now what will happen is it will show you what it would do if you omit the dry run parameter. Okay, so you can see it would create the template, so the HTML template of that component. It's, uh, it would create a TS file, so the, the code, yeah, and the style sheet, and it would modify uh, the module. Now we will do the same, but without dry run, and this is exactly what we want. Okay, now this is the command to really generate the components, yeah, and, and you can see that there are some options so the first object, uh, the first option, the project option says uh, in which which library to, to choose. Yeah, the second one, style, says which type of style sheet you want to use. So you can, for example, use uh, regular CSS. Yeah, but we want SCSS. Yeah, uh, then you are saying that this component, that's the export parameter. Uh, should be exported so it's it's visible to the outside and because we it's not an internal component we want to use it externally now the last option is the prefix option um, I would recommend to use it uh, internally at one identity we use always IMX which stands for the identity manager basically this the prefix will be uh, uh, prepended to to the component tag. Yeah? So when you add the new component into an HTML page, uh, you use a tag like a div, like a div tag, so on and so forth. And here we have our own tag. Yeah? And to prefix it, uh, it is a good idea because there can be other components with the same name. So if you use a prefix, charges are high that that uh, they are not duplicate components. Now, as I mentioned internally, we use IMX, but for custom components, uh, we recommend to use the CCC uh, prefix. Let me do that. Okay, now you can see, looking into the sample identity directory, <clears throat> that first, the module file has changed. You can now see that in the declaration section of the module, we have our new component. And because we want to use the component, not only internally, but also the module exports that component in this section. And second, there's a new folder, which the sample identity folder, which contains now our new component. In Angular, components consist normally of three or four files. Yeah? It's the template file, it's this one. Yeah, this is basically bowler plate. Yeah. Uh, then we have our style sheet file, which right now is empty. And then we have also uh, uh, the TS file, which will contain the logic. And depending if you want to, to have unit tests or not, you can, uh, so in our case, we have created a unit test uh, uh, file, but you can omit it if you don't if you don't work with unit tests. Now the next step is to, like I mentioned before, is to add a route to the routing table of the QR uh, module, because otherwise Angular cannot will not be able to find that module. Yeah? So we need something like a path or a route. 
to that newly created component. And you add routes to, to the QER module file. Uh, you can see here that we have already one route, the dashboard route, and now we will add uh, the route to our new component in the routing table. And it looks like this. So it says the path, so that's basically the like, like a name yeah, uh, of the route. Um, then we have the component and you see right now that it cannot find it, so we have to import it. I will do that in a second. And these two guys here are so-called uh, root guards, but this is, uh, we will handle this another time. This is about uh, if you invoke that route, can you see it or not? It depends on, on if you're, for example, authenticated or not, yeah? But this is something we will cover in, a, in another uh, tutorial. So what I have to do is to import this guy here and this path is correct. And then I will save it. Now the third step is adding an, a menu. So we have something like a button or a menu item and when we click on that button it will use exactly this route and then we will be able to navigate to, to the new component. The menu is added in the QER service file. A, a couple of words uh, on this. So we have um, reusable components and reusable services and, and plugins and so on and so forth. Yeah, And, and the menu service is one of this. So what, what we can do, we can, we can add sometimes also in a dynamic fashion, yeah, we can simply add new menus uh, uh, to the menu service, and then we will see we will see that uh, in, in the menu bar. Yeah. And to show that, um, perhaps we can we can start the application yeah, before I add the menu, and then you can see the effect. Yeah. So let me create a new terminal, and now we will add with another script, which basically also uses, of course, uh, uh, ng, so the Angular CLI, to start our application. Um, it's this command. The application, the portal, has, has been successfully compiled, and now we can start to debug it. VS Code has also a debugger. Right now it's not configured and you can use different browsers for debugging. The default is Chrome, but there are also, when you look at the extensions, yeah, you can also, there, there are uh, um, on the marketplace, you will find also extensions for other browsers, but we will now use the default yeah, and we have to create um, a, a configuration and we will use Chrome. And because uh, uh, the Angular CLI, when you use ng-serve, it does not so serve on localhost 8080, but on, for, on the port 4200, so we have to change that. But of course, you, you could also uh, change the configuration in the Angular CLI serve command, uh, but we will go with 4200. Uh, and then we can start it. And what we will do now, so looking at the uh, at the menu uh, bar, yeah, we will add now a new um, a new menu and with a new menu item uh, into this menu bar. So let let's do that. So we can close this guy here. As I mentioned before, we will add the menu in the QR service uh, um, uh, file, yeah? and and we have already uh, uh, the correct function. And when you look in different components, you will always find this function, the setup menu, and then you can add your own menus. Yeah? We will talk in another session about reusable components, and then we will explain what the different steps are, what you have to do, what the options are also for other components. 
but uh, but for today we will I will only edit yeah, and show you what will happen then. So the menu the menu title will be samples and and the menu item title will be identities and um, now I will save it. it it will re recompile and then we should see it uh, in the debugger. Okay, now the uh, the application is compiled. So let's see if we can see our uh, if there's a new menu and a menu entry. And yes, you can see samples and you can see identities. And when I click on identities. Uh, we will see, we are, we are looking at, at our new component.